this is um, not published in science, but this is like their science news thing. Um, the original article I will show you shortly. Drug-laced beer may have forged ancient Peruvian empire. Andean rulers may have fostered allegiance one feast at a time. The first paragraph being, and then again, this is the science, this is the report on the science in the journal Science. Between 500 and 1100 CE, the highlands of Peru were home to a far-reaching empire known as the Wari. Like the Inca after them, the Wari managed to spread their culture over the vast distances and rugged terrain of the Andes Mountains. Now, new finds from a small site in Peru suggest that the Wari may have forged political alliances by serving drug-laced beer to local elites at periodic parties, extending their empire one trippy feast at a time. So if I may have my screen back for a moment, Zach. That was enticing enough that I went um, and read the actual article that was, this was based on. Hold on, I don't have it up yet, it's different. Is it? Yeah. Um, here it is. Um, published in Antiquity this month, the journal Antiquity, it's called Hallucinogens, Alcohol, and Shifting Leadership Strategies in the Ancient Peruvian Andes. At some level, who knew? Yeah. Right? Like, I, I didn't know that this was a realm of research, and I find it fascinating. Um, let's see, there's one thing at the very end that I want to share, but <clears throat> um, let me just share the, this is sort of the summary. I don't, it's not the abstract exactly, but um, or maybe it is. In the pre-Columbian Andes, the use of hallucinogens during the formative period, 900 to 300 BC, often supported exclusionary political strategies. And they later go on to explain that basically hallucinations tend to be um, individual, small group, if any group at all, and therefore um, foster um, basically, like they say, exclusionary strategies in which you have either shamans or just elites doing them. Whereas during the late Horizon period, AD 14, CE 1450 to 1532, Inca leaders emphasized corporate strategies via the mass consumption of alcohol corporate strategies via the mass consumption of alcohol. Everything in this is just blowing my mind. <laughs> Using data from, from Quilcapampa, the authors argue that a shift occurred during the Middle Horizon period, AD 600 to 1000, when beer made from Skynus Mole, I don't know, um, was combined with a hallucinogen, Anadenanthera colubrina. Uh, the resulting psychotropic experience reinforced the power of the Wari state and represents an intermediate step between exclusionary and corporate political strategies. This Andean example adds to the global catalog documenting the close relationship between hallucinogens and social power. And so their basic argument is alcohol um, loosens people up, makes people feel like they're having a shared experience, and anyone can make it. Right? So once you expose people to alcohol, if, if, if somehow you have a society where there is no alcohol, which I don't know if that even exists, but um, and, you, and you bring it to a party or a festival or something, uh, people are going to figure out how to do it. And I mean, precisely because it just happens, like alcohol happens. Whereas, um, especially in South America, the strong hallucinogens tend to involve um, very carefully curated and crafted combinations in which you don't just happen into this stuff, right? It's not that you found some, some psilocybin. You, know, you didn't just find the mushrooms and eat them and, and had a trip. They tend to be um, you know, very complex recipes. And that basically the argument is that the what they're calling the corporate structure of the inca and of many modern uh, modern nation states encourages basically <clears throat> mass um mass lack of sobriety with alcohol um but not the sort of insight of hallucinogens because that many people on hallucinogens wouldn't be controllable and what the what the wari have done they're arguing let me find this one quote that i wanted to share um, okay, there's two quotes, actually. So here's one. Our paleoethnobotanical evidence from the Wari outpost of Quilcapamba strongly suggests that Vilca was added to mole beer at feasts. Combining a hallucinogen with alcohol altered the experience of both psychoactive substances and, we argue, provided Wari leaders with a corporate strategy of governance via patron-client feasting relationships. So they go through the <clears throat> botanicals. They actually have a fascinating list of all the, all the species they found at the site, which includes um, quinoa and squashes and cactuses and coca and beans and peanuts and potatoes and ahi, um, which is a, a hot pepper and some um, and corn. Um, and then these 
this hallucinogen and this thing that they're making the alcohol into. Vilca infused mole chicha. So chicha is just the broad name for um, the 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 alcoholic brew that is still eaten, uh, drunk a lot in, uh, in Quechua territory in the in South America. Vilca infused mole chicha enabled a more inclusive psychotropic experience in Wari society. For perhaps the first time in the Andes, the consumption of Vilca therefore moved beyond those spiritual leaders who communed with the supernatural realm. The Vilca-infused brew brought people together in a shared psychotropic experience, while ensuring the privileged position of Wari leaders within the social hierarchy as the providers of the hallucinogen. People couldn't go source it for themselves because they didn't know the recipe. Yeah. So you came to the parties and you knew you were going to have some fun at the parties and you couldn't go try this at home. Um, yeah, actually, just one, one more. By, by tying their esoteric knowledge of obtaining and using Vilca as an additive to mole chicha, an intoxicant that stimulated communitas, Wari leaders were able to legitimize and maintain their heightened status. These individuals were able to offer memorable, collective, psychotropic feasts, but ensured that they could not be independently replicated. So that's wild. Yeah. I, I have two Yeah, strong, so this is new to you. Yeah, this is, this is new to me. Mm-hmm. Um, one... Uh, there's a, there's a delightful little game you can play where you know you, you listen to this description scientific as it is, yep. and you know how would they know? Well, no, I I haven't looked at it, but my guess is you know that's a that's a decently plausible description of a mechanism and all of this, and who's to say if it's yep. really 100 percent accurate? But nonetheless, there's nothing about that description that strikes me as you know preposterous. Yep. But it does strike me as, um, you know, academics go to a party and then try to describe what happened. <laughs> well, if they'd written it while they were on this brew, it probably wouldn't be as coherent. Right. If they had been invited to the party, and it's <laughs> yes. easy to understand why academics wouldn't be. Um, I mean, aside from this being a 1,500-year-old uh, that's practice. An, that's another obstacle. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, it, it is funny to me. I think if we were to be able to teleport to such a party you might actually be able to recover their description, but that would be like, oh no, no, that's not that's not what it was like, right? You know, what it was like was very well. And I mean, they're not trying to, they're not, <clears throat> they're not right. pretending to have done ethnography. No, they're. I, I hope that they wish that they could. Right, right, that they could have been participant observers in these feasts and thus learned even more. But um, archaeologists are not cultural anthropologists; they do different work, and uh, they have different evidence that they are looking at. Which leads me to my other reaction okay. to this, which is some part of me desperately wants alien anthropologists to describe what has happened in light of covid and our public oh, health yeah. priesthood and the way that they have uh, gained power and mm-hmm. uh, led the collected mm-hmm. uh, population into a mass psychosis event yep. that only served to instantiate their own blah 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 deep into the future it would be if you if you had if you could put that description uh, up next to a proper and similar description of what is taking place in the present, then you'd know something. 